Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Babylon JS. Why are we talking about Babylon JS? Well, there's two reasons. First off, it's quite cool. Second off, Babylon JS 4.0 was just released. So what exactly is it? Well, it is a JavaScript-based game engine that runs in your browser, full-fat 3D game engine. And there's not a lot of native JavaScript game engines out there for uh, HTML5 development. There is this, uh, there is Play Canvas, which is uh, owned by Snap and is a commercial project. Project. And then there's 3JS, which actually sits a little bit lower in the stack. It's more like, say, Render, oh, sorry, Ogre is to a full-blown game engine. Um, and that's kind of the biggies in this space. Now, all of the major game engines, you know, uh, Unity, Unreal, Godot, and so on, have HTML5 exporters, but you're not creating human-readable HTML5 in that case. You're basically creating virtual assembly code that runs in your browser. Well, in this case, what we're looking at is a fully open source browser-based game engine, and it does a very good job. Now, one of the major things that happened with Babylon JS 4.0 is a facelift. It used to be quite ugly, and this this is their new minimalistic website, and it's definitely an improvement in my opinion. Now, on top of that, um, Babylon JS is also available on GitHub, as you can see right here at Babylon JS as the, the repository, so github.com forward slash Babylon JS. Um, it is an Apache 2.0 licensed project. It is very actively developed. You're going to see activity on it pretty much every single day in some shape or form. Um, you can run it directly as a CDN or with the uh, release of 4.0, you can now get it in uh, modular NPM support. Uh, speaking of which, let's take a quick look at what is new in this release. Now, I'm only going to look at the major new features. There's a lot that was added or changed in this, but we're going to stick to the major update section. And what we've got, there's a new forum, a new website. Uh, we've got the inspector was updated to 2.0. Uh, I'll show you the inspector in action in a few moments. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, added support for parallel shader compilation, object-based motion blur, support for MOJS, which is a physics uh, implemented as a plugin. Uh, there's WebXR support. WebXR is a web standard, kind of a combination of VR and AR. They've called it XR. Not really sure why they went with that naming convention, but they've got support for it. So if you want to do VR in the browser, you can. Uh, a bunch of GUI updates, as you can see right here. Uh, they migrated the code to modules and deployment via ES6 NPM packages, as I mentioned earlier on. Makes it easier to use just what you need and to get up and started if you're using a node and NPM or node package manager based workflow. Um, add a trail mesh class uh, support rendering to multi view. Um, PBR updates added clear coat, anisotrophy, sheen, subsurface, energy conservation through multi surface BRDF, inspector debug mode, Smith height, uh, correlated visibility term, SH harmonics, and an added STL exporter. Those were the major. Uh, top level new features, but there is a ton more to this particular release. As you can see here, we've got a number of different option uh, optimizations that were added. I'm just going to gloss over them. I will link a link to this release notes if you want to get down into more detail. A bunch of updates, GUI core engine level, a lot at the core engine level, uh, object loader, GLTF loader improvements, GLTF serializer improver, post-processing library, added an ocean post-process, um, material library improvements, infrastructure, and then a ton of bug fixes and core engine bug fixes, loaders, and then a bunch of breaking changes. So if you are coming from an earlier version, which I think 3.3 was the most recent version, uh, do be sure to check out the breaking changes because they're, they, well, they'll break you. <laughs> uh, so that is the major what's new in this particular release. Now let's actually take a look at uh, how you can get started learning uh, Babylon JS, which actually is really easy because they've made their playground available. So if you want to learn Babylon JS, they have the Babylon JS playground. It is actually linked off their homepage. Just click right there and it will bring you to this, which allows you to run various different versions in the browser. So you can see here, uh, we have a PBR based rendering, this helmet, this very famous helmet at this point. So you get an idea of some of the graphical capability of this actual library. You can also see some of the the UI in action here. And there's a bunch of things we could do. So we could do vignette this guy here. I'm going to multiply it and apply a different color on it. I'm uh, going to do chromatic aberration like so. Which I'm going to undo. I'm going to undo my vignette as well. So chromatic aberration. We can add bloom. So let's, let's blue. Hey, did you not bloom? It doesn't seem to be blooming. Uh, depth of field and so on. So you got a bunch of rendering effects you could change around with. You get an idea of the kind of UI capabilities you've got. And then you'll notice over here on the left hand side, you've got a full blown editor going on. Um, so you can um, actually come in here. So for example, if I look at and edit this panel, I can now go panel, oops, I can spell it right, dot 
and you'll see you get full code completion. Uh, you've also got um, syntax highlighting. You've got code and quick navigation down here on the side. Uh, so you get pretty much a full-blown editing experience. You don't have right-click support on this one, unlike the Pixie Playground I showed you the other day. But one thing that's important on this one is you'll notice over here on the left-hand side, this is the inspector. This is an area that got a lot of improvement on, in the most recent release. So inspector 2.0 was added. Now this is an embeddable uh, debug tool or, or editing tool that you can add in with basically one line of code. And to enable it, we just click here, click the inspector, and then boom. So you can see your whole um, scene here. So we can break it down, you can see all the various different textures that go together to create our thing. Uh, we've got all the various different nodes that went together to create uh, our hierarchy. Um, so there is our helmet, for example, or our camera, and then you've got properties of it so that you can actually edit them on the fly. So if I wanted to change the field of view of the active camera, we can do so. That's the background camera though. So here, our selected camera, I could change out the field of view or whatever. You'll notice that these values change on the fly based off of the type of entity that you've got selected. And then you've got a bunch of options and uh, debugging control over. So if I want to debug the normals on this guy, I can do normal debugging and so on. So that is your inspector. Uh, we come down here, we've got uh, helpers. We can turn on and off various different uh, features in our rendering. Uh, we've got statistics, so we can see you know how many meshes we're rendering, how many... I think that might be doing it for the whole thing. So if I go here up to the, the full scene, you'll see here we've got our frame rate, the number of faces, the number of indices, and so on being displayed. And then we've got a bunch of tools over here. So what you can do is you can screenshot or record video of what you're doing, create a replay, and then you can actually export your scene out. You could export it as GLB, which is the binary format for uh, the WebGL um, GLTF tra or GL transfer file transmission format, or whatever, GLTF binary format is GLB. On top of that, you can export it out as a Babylon file. What is a Babylon file? Well, Babylon file is basically a scene uh, format that Babylon supports. So you might be wondering, okay, well, what about a level editor? Yes, there is one of those as well, and we will see it in a second. But first, I wanna show you one other aspect of the playground that is very important. So if you want to get started with Babylon coding, you'll notice up here, I don't know why I'm scrolled up. Here, let me just do a reload so we can start that over again. So we we'll refresh the entire playground. Here, let's go to the base of it. So when you first come in, we're at the playground and you'll notice up here in the top right, and well, we've got a much, much simpler example here, which is nice because so, if you are just starting things out, you could come in over here and you can see the code that is attached. This is the code basically to create a camera, add the sphere to the scene, uh, focus the camera on it, add some lighting and so on. Uh, so if we wanted to change out our, um, now that's the ground shape. So here's our sphere. So if we want to make it different size, I could go ahead here and change that to five like so, and then run it and then you'll see our sphere updated. So you, it allows you to basically interactively play around with uh, the Babylon JS library. It's a great way to learn it, but what's even more important is you come over here and you have an absolute ton of examples. And, and I'm not exaggerating when I say a ton. Let me just start scrolling and 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 it just kind of keeps going and going and going. It's on GPU particles, cloth physics simulations, physics simulations. Uh, the, the PBR example we just sucked earlier on right there. Uh, so they really vary from, you know, this simple simple scene to very demonstrative of single entities like 3D textures or 360 degree textures, creating a mirror, VR examples, video texture examples. So there is probably an example in the playground for just about everything you'd want to do. So if you want to do bump textures, you come in here, load up, here is your new code for bump textures. All right, so that is the playground. This is where you would come to learn it. Also, by the way, Babylon.js has excellent documentation. So the reference materials are also also very good. So this is a good framework to go ahead and learn. You can also come in here, uh, save out the example that you've used here and download it. He's also got some controls over the settings like here. Uh, and then of course you can turn the inspector on and off. You can look at some of the metadata behind the scene and that's about it. Now I mentioned earlier on, there is an editor and here we are. This is the editor. This is available at editor.babylonjs.com. You'll notice there is a 3D viewport in the middle here. You can navigate it using the mouse and standard WAS keys, just like you would in the Unity editor. Uh, the performance is quite solid. If I want to go ahead and add something into the world, I just come up here to add and I can add whatever I want. So I could go ahead and add in a sphere I got a new sphere here and then I can just move it around as I saw wish and so on. Uh, with the sphere selected, you will notice over here, the inspector shows uh, the properties of the selected object. So 
like there. So if I select a light instead, you'll see we get different sets of properties available over here. Uh, we have the ability to play our code directly from here. Uh, we can add in assets. For some reason, this doesn't work for me, but you can end up with the same result here. So I could go ahead and I can import a mesh, uh, various different formats. I don't think it tells me them right here. Yeah, all formats. Um, so I, I can't tell you immediately what file formats are supported, but you see you got a pretty full blown. So we got a material viewer, we got a texture viewer, all the various different entities in our scene. You see the uh, the results on them. So I can take this sphere PBR. I think I can drag and drop, apply it to my, yeah. So there you go. We just applied it to our scene. Uh, you've got the various different properties for it over here. It's, it's a full blown, pretty much uh, what you would expect world editor. You don't want something in your scene. Uh, you can grab it there. Oh, that's to maximize it, uh, to grab it, grab it by the tab, and you can drag it around. So if I docked it to this tab, I can do so. So even though it's running in a browser, it's got pretty much the same functionality you would expect from a traditional uh, you know, desktop-based level editing environment. The cool thing is on top of that, you do get, um, oops, in some cases, you get right-click support where it makes sense. In some cases, you get the browser if it hasn't been implemented. Uh, you got camera controls over here, uh, various different options. So I could do bounding boxes instead, or I could do wireframe rendering. Uh, we've got, so those were the, the different scenes I showed you. We've got tools here. So we've got an animation editor, code editor, graph editor, material editor, post-processing editor, pathfinding, uh, pathfinder editor, uh, notes, metadata editor, prefab editor. So you can create prefabs that we could add here in our prefab list. Um, and that is essentially Babylon JS. As I mentioned earlier on, it is very, very capable, and it's one of the few full fat um, 3D game engines that will run directly in the browser native to JavaScript. Like I said, you can export in a number of different languages out, but if you actually want to work in the, the same language that you are going to end up with in the end, uh, Babylon JS is one of the best choices. Now I've also got a tutorial series out there. This was based off of a 3.x version, but if you want to learn more about Babylon JS, I should post, I should get rid of that because nothing new is coming. But I have done a tutorial series that will uh, get you started cameras, lights, materials, and 3D models, uh, walks you through mostly code focused how to set all these things up. So if you wanna learn how to create lights, here is the code, here is the end result, and there is a video to go along with it. So I will link this down below as well. Again, this is not for the 4.0 release. I am curious to hear what about you guys though. Are you interested in something like Babylon JS or are you more likely to use a traditional game engine and export it out as uh, you know an HTML5 compiled page of some form? Um, let me know, comments down below, but definitely uh, this is a nice release, nice makeover. It, it is a very capable game engine and it actually it looks it now. Uh, so it's amazing how much a nice makeover can actually do for you. But that is it. That is Babylon JS, and I'd be interested in hearing what you think in the comments down below. All right, talk to you all later. Goodbye.